Hi, I'm Kevin from Thrush Aircraft. Remember, when you're flying a Thrush, you're never flying alone. With our team of factory experts always on hand to answer any questions or comments you may have. Today we're going to talk about something very important in regards to safety. We're going to talk about pre-flight inspections. Thrush does recommend that you make a form and you follow it daily. You want to start at one spot and always go back to the same spot on the aircraft, but just be aware of complacency when doing this. First thing we're going to do, we're going to remove all of the prop tie downs, we're going to remove the oil cooler plugs, and we're going to look for any loose fasteners or hardware. Once we have any of all of our gust locks and safety equipment removed, we want to inspect the propeller, looking for any damages, dents, cracks, corrosions. We'll make sure the blade is tight. We're going to look for any extra oil or grease around the propeller as well. From there, we're going to come around and start checking fasteners. So you want to inspect around the exhaust here, just making sure that there are no marks from where the skin has made contact. Condition of your filter as well coming through. And usually you can take just the palm of your hand and give it a tap, and you'll actually can hear like if you have a loose fastener like that one. After we check the cowling and the prop, we're going to come underneath the right wing. Looking for any loose fasteners, we want to check make sure our fuel lines are tight. The fuel vent line here, we want to drain it completely every day before flight. And then this sump underneath the wing is the fuel tank. We want to get about a quart from it every day, just for fuel inspection purposes. So after we drain under the sumps and the fuel vent line, we want to come across the right wing and we're going to look for inspection covers to be closed, as well as any loose rivets or hardware you might find. Also, we want to check for the airspeed indicator here, make sure that it's not plugged, that it's free. Uh, coming across then, we want to check boom hangers and we want to look at the nav lights to make sure that they are on and tight and functioning. So after we make sure that we get our nav lights, we want to come around the aft side of the wing, looking for any loose rivets or hardware on the top. We want to remove our aileron gust locks, and we want to check for freedom of movement for the ailerons. We want to make sure that we are touching both stops and that we're not making contact with any of the hinge points. You want to make sure that you don't make contact with the linkage rod here. You also want to make sure that your trim tab is connected and tight. These are rod end bearings. You want a little bit of play, but it doesn't need to be loose enough that they can be adjusted by themselves. And you want to do the same for the inboard hinge and make sure you're making contacts with both stops. After that, we're going to come to the flap. You want to make sure there is gap and clearance, that nothing is damaged on the leading edge or the trailing edge of the flap. For the boom hangers, you want to make sure that they are tight and clamped. Usually, you'll put a zip tie or safety wire across to make sure that they are secure. So once we check the cowling and the wing, we want to pick back up where we left off with the cowling and make sure that we get the hopper skin, the fairings, make sure that all these are tight and secure. You want to check here to make sure that your door hinge is actually secure as well. Uh, looking for any gaps around the skins here or the steps, make sure the fairings are tight. Then we're going to come down making sure that all of our skins are tight, paying a special attention to the static wick here to make sure the static port. And then we want to come through and make sure that underneath on the side panels, all these are tight and that we have clearance around the cable and it's loose for the rudder cable, making sure that the V-struts are tight as well and you want to inspect your hardware there as well, making sure it's tight. So after we do the V-struts and come around the horizontal, we want to make sure for the empennage here that we check for security, the elevators as well, we want to make sure they are freedom of movement. We want to check the hinge points here, here, and here at the horn as well to make sure that everything is tight. Checking the elevator trim tab and that these rods and the rod end bearings are free, but that the jam nuts are tight. So after we do the right side, we're gonna do the same for the left side. The only difference is we wanna remove our rudder gust lock here. So once we make sure we have our rudder gust lock removed, we wanna inspect our rudder for freedom of movement, that it actually connects and hits the stops as well. So solid left, solid right. We'll make sure that we check that the cable has freedom of movement, but that the hardware is still tight and secure. We also want to check our three hinge points for the rudder. So we have one here, here, and down low there to make sure that they're secure as well. After that, we want to do the same thing that we did on the right side for the left side. The trim tab rods, we want to check them for freedom of movement. We also want to make sure that our, our hinges aren't too tight or rusted, need lubrication, so they're not creaking or whining. So we also want to check with the elevator to make sure that we get the hinge on the left side as well. Check both hinges and freedom of movement and then check for the security of the elevator and the horizontal together as well. So after we do the elevator and the empennage, we wanna come back and do the V-struts on this side as well, make sure they're tight and hardware as well. We wanna make sure that the rudder cable is free and clear here with the, with the skins. 
and that we want to check make sure there is no hardware loose. Then we want to come here to the static port to make sure that it is free and clear that there is nothing in that hole. Coming across the fuselage here, we want to make sure that we check the skins for tightness, make sure the fasteners are all tight, and that we have a little bit of clearance around the side load valve here, and then looking for clearance around the steps, making sure that our hinge for the door is tight and secure, and that all of the panels here are also tight. So after we check the fuselage for the skins, we want to come back to the left wing, we want to make sure that the flap is secure. Uh, we're looking for gaps across the top, make sure there's no damage there. Checking the boom hangers as well. This side also has the flap light. We want to make sure that the placards are still intact and readable, legible, that we can actually see the markings. Uh, we want to make sure the flap is secure. Then we're going to do the same as we did on the right side for the aileron, checking for freedom of movement. We want to make sure that there is no interference issues with the skin. And then we also want to check again the trim tab for the left side as well. Coming around the front of the left wing, we want to look for any more loose rivets, uh, any hardware. We want to make sure the inspection panels are all closed. Um, we'll have to check the tie down ring, the boom hangers for their hardware. And coming through, we want to check to make sure that we get the stall warning switch, that it's loose here. Make sure that it is adjusted properly and the pilots can give you some feedback on that as well. All right, then we want to come through for any of the other inspection panels, make sure they're all tight and make sure there is no more loose hardware. Here we have the oat gauge, the outside air temperature gauge. On a new GE, it will be under the left wing. On a new Pratt, it will be under the right wing. We want to make sure that there is no corrosion on them and that they are secure as well. We want to check, make sure we drain the header tank here underneath the belly. We want to make sure we check it for at least one quart of fuel to check for contamination. Underneath the left wing, we want to check the same as the right wing. We want to drain at least one quart from the sump. Check for the tightness of the hoses. We want to drain this fuel vent completely dry as well. This is your fuel vent system, drain cock. We want to make sure it's dry every day. We also want to check the fuel line here. This is your fuel vent intake. You always want to make sure that nothing has made a nest in there that it is also free and clear. So once you drain your fuel sumps, you want to come up here on the left cowling. We'll make sure that we actually check all the baggage doors, check the, um, the vent lines for the battery as well as the drains there. We want to make sure that all the skins are tight, that there are no loose fasteners. This is the starter scoop for the GE. You want to make sure that it's clear as well. You want to check the air filter here to make sure that the condition of it is good and we're looking for any loose hardware. Also want to check to make sure that your exhaust is still clear on the left side, just like we did on the right side. Make sure there are no marks from them touching and then fasteners and then we're back to the propeller. The next thing we want to do is get inside the cockpit and actually do a pre-flight in there for the flight controls, the actual control stick and the rudder pedals, as well as a few of the battery and electrical items. So when we're talking about the rudder freedom of movement, we want to make sure that we have the uh, no engagement with, with your feet or with anything, anything interfering with the pedals. Also with the control stick, we make sure that it is allowed to be moving freely in all directions and you're hitting all your stops. We want to inspect the flaps as well to make sure that they are in functioning as they are one of the few flight controls that are electric and not mechanical. All right, we're letting the flaps down, checking for 15 degrees of travel down and up. We also want to make sure that the stall warning is functioning, so we'll have another coworker or pilot go through and check the stall warning, make sure we get the, both the indication and the horn. For the tire pressure, we also want to make sure every day that they are 64 approximately in the front and 75 in the aft for the tailwheel tire. The other thing we want to do is check the oil levels. Both the GE and the Pratt engine will take about 13 quarts to be full and the indications will be either between the maximum and minimums on the cold. For any other information about a pre-flight or any other safety requirements, remember to check us out online at www.thrushaircraft.com.